Over the past weeks, we've covered a number of topics under labor law. We've been talking to Michael Bagram of Bagram's Attorneys. We've heard how complex labor law can be, and it doesn't get any easier, does it? When your employee disappears for a day or two and doesn't come back, what can you do? When your employee takes part in a strike, what can you do? Are you entitled to fire that person? We at Bagram's Attorneys are specialists in labor law, and we specifically look at areas such as automatically unfair dismissal. And we employ experts in this area to research it all the time. We follow the latest court cases. We follow the latest journals. Everything that is coming out, we look at carefully. And there's a big area of discussion known as automatically unfair dismissals. And that could be trying to dismiss one for trade union activities, closed shop dismissals, participation in lawful strikes, etc. And this becomes very important for handling those dismissals in the future. For instance, if someone is trying to exercise their rights in terms of pregnancy, discrimination, retirement, transfer of business, whistleblowers, all those areas, those people are protected in terms of the Labor Relations Act and the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. And we, advising employers, advise them very carefully to have a look at this. Sit back for a minute, have a look what the employees have done, have a look at their trade union activities, and make sure that you, as the employer, don't fall foul of any of the legislation. For instance, when an employer buys a new business, for instance, they take over a business as a going concern, they need to carefully look at Section 197 of the Labor Relations Act because then they take over all the staff as the going concern on the same terms and conditions as what they were working at before. They're obliged to do that. They are obliged to do it. So we very carefully tell employers, before you go and purchase a business, come to us, talk to us. We will have a look at the business that you're thinking of purchasing. We will get all the terms and conditions of the staff. We will make sure that we have a look at their circumstances. We have a look at every single staff member, and we then advise the new employer the purchaser of that business, as to how they should particularly contain those employment contracts. So you can't have someone afterwards saying, I've purchased the business, I've inherited 300 staff, I'm going to employ them by paying them X amount. You can't do that. You have to pay them what they were earning before, and you have to take them on the same terms and conditions, and it creates a lot of heartache. Obviously, you can structure it after the purchase. You can then start negotiating with the trade unions or the staff, and you can start having a look at it. Of course, in circumstances of insolvency, it's slightly different, and we need to discuss that as well. Obviously, when there's a trade union, the trade union has certain views, and they also want to negotiate certain conditions of service for their members. And sometimes that does lead to a lawful strike. That means they've gone to the bargaining council or to the CCMA and they've declared that the strike would be lawful. It's done through a process and we can obviously help any business who come to us on that. When people are on a lawful strike, you can't go ahead and dismiss because they're on strike. What you can do is you can approach the union and say people are misbehaving while they're on strike. They're stopping the trucks coming in to deliver goods to the factory, or they're stopping other staff from coming to work at the factory. So that intimidation is that, illegal. That is completely illegal, but then you have to have the disciplinary hearing and you have to go through with it before you go ahead with a dismissal. Like any other circumstances, you can't dismiss without a hearing. Obviously, if people don't appear for the hearing, you go ahead with the hearing without them. But then people are warned specifically on that. So, when, for instance, someone has complained, for instance, to the receiver revenue about some practice that you have in your business, they might be doing it in terms of the whistleblowers legislation. Once again, you can't go ahead and dismiss them because they've done that. You might not trust them in the future. But that they have a right. It's then jolly disloyal, isn't it? It is disloyal, but they do have protection in terms of the labour law. And we at Bagram's Attorneys specifically look at this. We've produced a booklet, and that booklet does outline the rights and duties of each and every single employer. We've had a look at all the legislation, and we've done it in a small A4 size. We've done that, for instance, with domestic workers as well. And we've produced the booklet for them. We've been talking quite a lot about the employers and about trade unions and employees. Getting back to employers, in fact, let's go back to where we started the series of talks six weeks ago, and that small business um, 
Employers Organization, which is a kind of a trade union for the employer. That is, and the Small Business Employers Organization is a very careful protection for all employers. And we've, we urge people to join it. It's a, it's a cheap way of looking at it. And it's good for small, especially small employers to come forward, join. You get free advice telephonically. So it helps that on that basis. And then, of course, we help you put together all your conditions of service. And as Small Business Employers Organization, we're very proud to be able to make sure that the system functions properly. If you'd like further information about labor law, contact Michael, Michael Bagram at michael at bagrams.co.za by email or look in the phone book 0614-104-104.